So everybody, my name is Lisa with the Concord Art Association. Um, our artist today who will be leading you in this wonderful art project is named Thea. Wave your hand in front of the camera, Thea. <laughs> and if you have questions, you're welcome to unmute or you can type them in the chat and um, I will do my best to help Thea get them answered. And, um, but just try to, you know, just follow along best you can and, um, uh, Thea will stop every couple of minutes to just pause and ask you if you need time to catch up. So uh, don't worry. And also this will be recorded so you can always come back and watch it again and hit the pause button at your own convenience. So if you miss something, you can always come back to it uh, when I post the recording in the next day or two. So Thea, take it away. Good morning, class. It's good to see you and happy St. Patrick's Day. That's great. Well, before I start, I want to remind you that you need uh, a plain, one piece of plain paper. This isn't plain, but plain. Uh, a black sheet of construction paper. And then some yellow and white. Scissors. Glue. Crayons and your pencil. So if you have those, those are what we'll be using. And I like using crayons because um, they were my first box to use to color things. And I just realized there are just so many beautiful things that you can do with crayons and you can pick them up anywhere. So the artist we're going to study is going, his name. This is our inspiration piece. His name is Diego Rivera. And he was born in Mexico in 1886. And he was a well-known artist who loved to paint. He did big pictures of murals. And in San Francisco, there are three of his murals um, that we can, that you can go see anytime. Um, Francisco, uh, Diego was a uh, one who really wanted to capture the everyday worker and what they did and brought it up to, uh, so people could see what they did in the fields, at work, and so he was really a, such a well-known artist in Mexico and even in the United States. Um, this is called, oh, what is this called, this picture? It's called the flower vendor. So you can see the flower vendor, she has a huge basket with lilies, tons of lilies that she has to wrap around and carry. And just so happened, my garden, I have some lilies. So you can see what lilies look like. So we're going to do that picture. Hey, Thea, can I um, ask the kids if they can spot something in the reference photo? Sure. Do you notice anything beside her knees? And do you notice anything at the very top above the bushel of flowers? What do you think those little areas are? You can you can unmute. Do you see do you see something at the top of the flowers and do you see something beside her knees? Maybe a giant? Kind of, huh? It looks like there's a, a man or a person. I'm gonna say it's a man because the head might look like bald. He's bald, right? Maybe he doesn't have any hair. And his feet, those are his feet. Do you see those beside her knees? So what do you think he's doing back there? I think he's helping her hold the heavy basket of flowers so she can tie it around her shoulders so that she can stand up and carry them like piggyback style, right? So that's a little piece of this art that a lot of people don't spot. And it's kind of fun to see this little mysterious thing and, and wonder what it's showing. Okay, back to you, Thea. Yeah, that's fine. No, it's a good point. He's kind of hid, <gasps> hidden behind the flowers. So this is, uh, let me see where I can put this. This is our inspiration piece. And then this is the piece that we're going to create, um, that we have the person in front of a basket and that we're gonna draw in color. And then we're gonna cut out flowers, lilies, and glue them on our paper. So this is the, in the spot, the paper we're gonna do. So let me set this aside so you can see it. I wanna make sure you can see it. So to draw the basket, 
the big area. I'm going to show you. I already did it, but I'm going to do it in marker. So you do it in pencil. So I'm going to do this and just watch me and then you can do it. So you will start. We're going to have a big basket. So start with a straight line up on both sides. And then you're going to make a semicircle to connect them. So it looks like um, a door, a key room. So all you do is go up straight about halfway to the paper and then a semicircle. So why didn't you do that right now? So I'm now we're going to do parts of the basket. We're going to break it down where she has a basket and rims and this big ribbon around her or uh, material around her. So right where it divides, we're going to make that a straight line across. That's going to be the ridge of the basket. So right above, like right in the middle, let's do a circle for her head. So if you see her head, oops, and then her hair is on top of it. So what I did was just kind of did a semicircle on top of the head. Now you're gonna be doing it in pencil. I'm doing it in marker for you to see. So what's great about pencil, you can erase. So don't worry about the eyes or any of the face features right now. So from her, we're gonna do, now we're gonna go and do her shoulders and dress. Let me get it close to the camera where you can see it. See her shoulders. So we're gonna take around and go straight down. Her other shoulders go straight down. Now in the middle is the ribbon right there. So I'm going to do a circle. That's where the ribbon, the material is. And then I'm going to do a line to that from one side and to the other side. We're just gonna draw all these in and then we'll be coloring. Now to get her shaw, if you see her shaw, it's just like a triangle. We'll worry about her arms later. Oh no, maybe we'll do her arms now. So her arms, if you see them, they are coming out, go down, and up, kind of like a triangle. Now don't worry if they're, mine looks rather thin. I think I'll go back and make them a little bigger when I, I color. Okay, are we okay? Can I go on? Everybody give me a thumbs up or for so far. Okay, I see people with thumbs up. Okay, so the material that's hanging down the ends of a 
tie, they're just straight lines. I'm gonna do one, two, and you can do it either straight or at the angle, it's up to you. And then the shaw, it's just a triangle like that. So that's just the basic person that I'm capturing. Now all the basket lines, I'm gonna create the basket lines and I'll tell you how an easy thing to do a basket lines. So let me show you and you just watch and then uh, we'll do it again. So I do just straight lines. I'm gonna do three down and don't worry about them being perfectly straight or if there's some are big or some are small, it doesn't matter. So you do the basket lines on both sides. I do about three lines down. So to get the basket lines to make it look baskets, this is the trick. You do little scoops. Let me do a few. They're just semi scoops. Then the next row, I go in between it. So they're not lined up. Thea, when you finish that row, can you hold that up close to the camera yes. for a moment? Yes. And just Yeah, hold it there for a moment so everybody can see. Right. It's a great trick going opposite to make it look like weaving. Yeah, and you just break it up. And what's great about baskets, because they're not perfect, because they were handmade, so there's just inconsistencies. So you don't have to worry about it being perfect. It's just, um, it makes it actually look better. Now we're doing the pencil, but when we go back, we're gonna do it, color it, and then we'll put black crayon over it. Okay, if you're happy with that side, you can do the other side. Now, also, I forgot to tell you above the lines, that's part of the basket too. So you have to take the lines on up. I just realized that, whoops. So above the ribbon, that's basket. So we have to do a few lines up there. Now the top part of the basket, there are some lines there and all you have to do is do curved lines on the top like that to make it look like a basket. Just kind of like the letter C. If you do the letter C all the way across, you'll make it look like a basket, the top of a basket. So don't worry about the face or the hair right now. Mine's, I have all those lines, but I have a sample that I'll show you how to do the face later, okay? So this is our basic drawing. Now we get to color it. And that's the fun part.
So for me, I start with the basket. That's the background. So I like using brown, but also with baskets, you can also put a little red or orange in it to blend them to make the brown look a little, uh, some variations of the brown. So what you can do is just color. I'm gonna do orange so you can see the orange here. And then I'll go over it with the brown. And you can see how just a little orange makes the brown a little different. I'll do a red here on this column so you can see how the red looks. And then go over with brown. Or if you just wanna do brown, oh, I know, sometimes yellow. Do a yellow and then a brown. Thea, yeah, that's a really great lesson on sort of tinting and creating different shades. Can you hold yeah. that up so they can see the difference between yes. the four stripes? I was gonna tell you. So the first one was orange and brown. Here's the next one is red. And then that this third one is just brown. And then the last one was yellow and brown. So it's really great that you could do variety of your basket colors that you can even highlight it, like have the yellow on the outside and have it different colors on that. But also remember, I forgot, always have to do the colors above the ribbon. <laughs> I was like, whoops, we gotta do the basket color. So whatever you like, this is what's fun, is that what basket color you would like is up to you. It's, um, this is where it's kind of fun, so now, Coloring the basket fills it in. Now remember to color in the top part of the basket. So why don't we take time and do the other side? And whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with, you can color the whole thing, or you can do a mixtures of reds and oranges. And then go over it with brown. And sometimes with crayons, what's really fun is that you can press a little harder and make it a little darker. So on that side, I pressed a little harder. This side, I pressed less. And you can see the difference of it. And I used more yellow. So at this time, why don't you take your black crayon and then go over the lines that you drew in the basket to make them stand out. That's what I did on this one. So I just, after I colored it, I went back over the brown and made them stand out. And once again, also, with the crayon, you can press less if you want less of a black line, or if you want it darker, press more. If you want it less, press lighter. So you can see on that one, it's showing out. I don't have a marker on it. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on that.
So when you're done coloring the basket, give me a thumbs up. So then I know it's about time to move on. About one more minute. I see some people are done. That looks good, Katya. Thanks. Yeah. Hold, okay. Hold up your basket whenever you're ready. We yeah. Let, let me see your time. basket when you're ready. Oh, I see a few. So now we're going to go on to the dress and her shawl. So because the black, she's wearing nice a black difference. dress. I kind of, I wanted to have it more colorful. I went red, but I'm thinking, hmm, maybe black or dark blue would really. Oh, hold on, Thea. I think, Kehlani, oh. do you have a question? Oh, okay. Uh, can you hold your, um, your coloring thing up for a little bit? This one? The other one. Oh, the other one. Yes, I certainly will. If anyone else has questions, now is a good time. Yeah, we'll just take a moment for everybody to catch up. Looking good, Katya. Okay, so I think we'll go on to her dress and shawl. So with the dress and shawl, her dress is black, but I think we're gonna do an undertone. So I'm gonna do blue first. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go black over her dress. So there's a lot of parts, so take your time in coloring it. So if you notice, if I do a blue undertone, the it shows through when I color black over it. So it doesn't look just dull when you just do black. Now her shaw is rather, I don't know, I think a peachy color, but I don't have peach in my color. I have some light pink or orange. Let me see, I'm gonna try let me see. I think I'm going to try a little orange on her shawl. Can we use oil pastels? Um, you could. It gets a little messy. Yes, if you have oil pastels and you're using that, I guess we'll continue. Yeah, I think whatever medium you want to use is fine. Yeah. Kids. I mean, um, uh, remember, we're creating something that is meant for kids of all ages to enjoy. So some younger kids might have crayons. Some of you older kids might have, you know, some nicer stuff like oil pastels, which are beautiful. So go for it. Right. Yeah. If you have it, that's great. So next is we're going to color her arms and her face. And, huh, that's. Bling's 
another, I want a little contrast between her shawl. So she, it's a little darker. So I'm gonna find a little darker color. I'm gonna try this out and then I'm gonna go over white. Cause she's out in the sun and she has probably gotten a little darker skin tone. So you can see. Well, you know what? I'll even try a little bit because some areas are a little darker. You can put a little brown on top of this color. As well as let's color her face. I'm gonna try some shading under her chin. And then I blend it with the white, see how that works. Okay, so you can be really creative with uh, skin tone with her arms and face. Next, I'm going to do, I did purple in my uh, one, but this one has blue and I think I'll use blue because it looks very bright. So her tie around the basket. I think the word of the day is sash. Sash, hey, that's a good term. <laughs> that's a sash. And if you went a little darker, press a little harder on your crayon or go back over again and you'll create a darker color on that. She's come along really fine. And then if you want fringes on her shawl, all you have to do is a few lines on the bottom of the triangle. So it looks, it's like just up and down little lines. And then while you have the black crayon, her hair is very black. So we're gonna go over it. And I got, she has on mine, she, I made a bigger head, bigger hair, which is okay. And I gotta go over the lines. Then, and I look at her and her face, she is looking down. So you just see her eyebrows and eyelids and her little bit of nose. And she's looking down because she's looking down ready to pick up. So what's great is all you have to do with the crayon is do some little semi circles. Just to show that she's looking down. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes for you guys to catch up on the coloring of her dress and her head and face. And then we'll go to the next stage. We're doing good on time. It's 4.30, so we have oh, half perfect. an hour. We are halfway there. Yeah, so get, hard to do the flowers. This is great. So this is where you'll be getting your scissors out and your glue. So that big black line. And kids, you can always finish coloring later if you want to stay put and start doing the flowers. You can finish coloring the lady later. Right. Since we only are here for another half an hour. Right. I'm going to show you the flowers will take longer, but once you get it, then you can just add what you want. So I cut out my flower bender shape. And then I'm, I didn't have, for my sample, I have blue. 
but my sample, I wanted you to have black for it to stand out. So just take your glue, flip it over. Just glue it on the outside. I just do a few in the middle. And then just place it as best you can. Now, if you want to leave room for, I didn't do the feet of the, it was great that Lisa pointed out, I didn't do the feet at the bottom, but if you want to add the feet later, you can always scoot it up on your sample and draw some feet if you want. So there we go. We got the basket vendor, and now we're going to start with the flowers. So I'm going to wait. And while you're waiting, I want to show you, I got some of these calla lilies out of my garden. So you can see what they look like. I miss my calla lilies in my oh. old house. I had so many. They're so oh. Each year is different. Some I have a lot and some I have few. But these I came did. up just in time. So I wanted you to, I wanted to That's share. That's awesome. With you. I didn't yeah. even know that I had calla lilies when oh. I first moved into that house because they were just bulbs in the ground and then all right. of a sudden they sprouted up. Right. It's kind of fun. So the calla lilies, we're going to put, you get to put out many flowers you want. And I wanted you to have the option of either yellow or white, or even there's pink calla lilies. So if you want pink paper or yellow paper, that is what I, you get to have your basket as uh, whatever color you want. So how are we doing? Everybody's ready to move on to the flowers? Okay, great. So set this lady aside because now we're gonna fill it up. So I take a piece of paper and I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna do white. And the basic calla lily shape is kind of like a teardrop, a raindrop, if you look at that, okay? So with your... So if you have any questions or chats, you know, just chime in. So I folded the paper in half and that way we get to draw them and then when we cut them, there'll be two. So I just practice just your teardrop. Can you do some of those teardrops with the marker? We can't see your pencil. Thank you. Thank you, yes, I certainly can. Okay, we'll do one more. And what's great, you don't have to, you can have them big or small. Because if you look at my samples, they're big and small. Okay, so I'm gonna cut one out. So since you folded it with um, two, you folded it, when you cut it out, you're gonna have two flowers. So let me do one. So with this, I have two. And I don't want to see, I don't want to see the black paint lines. You can either trim those off or you can just re reverse it. You know. Now on the lilies, let me see, can you see it? Because they have yellow centers, the little things. I take a yellow pencil and my light green and I color in the middle part. It's hard to see. Let me do a darker green on this one. And you're just creating that middle part of the stem.
I don't remember what that part of the flower is called. Has anybody had a science class? Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> is it the stamen or the piston? I, oh, oh, there's now you a, got two terms. There's yeah, a good. word and I don't know what it is. I'll have to look <laughs> it up. Okay, so I got my two flowers. And what you can do is you can cut a whole lot of flowers, or if you want to do two at a time, just take them put a little glue on the back and you start filling your basket. I start at the back and I want to overlap them because I want to fill my baskets. I want to fill it with lots and lots of flowers. Now, so let me show you a yellow one and a pink one. So I'm going to do a little stem. So the back of the basket is actually the top of the paper. Correct. Because Thank she's you. sort of leaning over a little bit. Right. Okay. Oh, I wanted to save these for my middle part. So I had filled my basket with tons of flowers. And I, when I get down to her head, I wanna make sure I glue around her head. So that's why I wait till last. So that, so let me do a couple more flowers. So I drew some, let me cut them out. Let me do a little coloring. I started thinking about that these flowers are so beautiful. And you wouldn't think flowers were heavy because they're really light, but then you look at how many she has in her basket. It looks like tons, tons going off to market. And that's, I've got four and I can just do more. I'm gonna show you also, if you do the same thing with pink paper, fold it in half. Where's my marker? Okay, Lonnie, do you have a question? Uh, can you use for the background? Can you use a different color paper? Oh yes, sure. sure. I have blue on this one because I didn't have black. Um, yeah, I just was doing it uh, to a darker color so the contrast of the lilies would stand out. I didn't want white on white. That's the only thing because I wanted the lilies to stand out on something dark. Uh, here's my pink flowers. I kind of like them. And actually, if you go to store, I saw some purple calla lilies. They're really beautiful. And I'm going to do this on top. Do, 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 where do I want to put these? I want to put them right here. So there's a contrast of the white calla lilies and then the pink ones and the yellow ones. So this is the time where you just take your time and cut and color the lilies.
And it actually is, I'm glad he painted this picture. I was starting to think about it because now people who pick flowers, they pick them and they put them in boxes and then they're taken off to markets and they're not put in baskets like this anymore. So he really captured uh, what men and women were doing back then and how much it has changed in the flower market. Flowers are still coming to the market. If you go to um, like the markets in, when we have them in summertime, there's always a flower vendor. And I think they're just as important as uh, bread and our fruit to bring beauty to our world. So I always go by the vendor, the flower vendors and pick a bundle to bring them home. To Every Tuesday morning, downtown oh. Concord Produce or Farmer's Market, there's always a flower lady there. Oh, is there? Oh, okay. She has beautiful flowers and they're very affordable too. Right. And I think bringing flowers is just as important for our meal to bring beauty. You know, that we, all this beautiful um, flowers are in our world and to always bring them into our homes to enjoy. So let's do a few more flowers. If you need to go back and color your basket or person, uh, go to that. Um, if you wanna try out some shading, keep going on this. This is a fun one that I really like is that you can just add as many flowers you want and the variety of flowers. Um, this, she makes me happy. I, I just like, I'm so happy that uh, uh, the flowers are presented in this picture that Diego did to bring that. So if anybody has questions, and I bet the oil pastel, if you get a little bit of break, I would love to see what you did with your oil pastels. Yeah, I like what you're doing there. You're putting them in different directions. Some are okay. pointing up and some are pointing down. Yes, that's, I'm glad you pointed that out because if you look at the picture, he has some out and then some pointing down. Just don't hide her head. <laughs> yeah, because when you put them all in, they do go different ways. Amber, and if you have a question? No? Okay, I nope. thought I saw you raise your hand, sorry. Okay. Christina, let me see. You got something to show? Oh my goodness. I love me... it. Oh, wow. Oh, Christina, that is really colorful. Beautiful. I like the bright orange in there. I can't see it. the that bright orange. Where did she use the bright orange? In the flowers. Oh, she did. Oh, awesome. In just 
uh, we've got about five minutes and okay. I'm going to ask in just about five minutes, I'm going to ask you guys to hold up your art if you feel comfortable so I can take a, a screenshot of everybody. Yeah. So if you didn't finish all your flowers, that's okay because this is something you can continue going. And fill as many flowers as you want. So here's my lady with lots of flowers and I overlapped them with that. Here's my sample one. I finished up adding more flowers to her and adding that stem. I like how different each lady looks. Yeah, I thought so too. I was like, wow, she looks uh, so taller. You know, I don't have her. And then this one, I got her lower and yeah. a little bigger, which I, I was afraid that her head would be too big. No, but like actually, it. actually, it looks good with the big flowers. Yeah, I like the second one. I like mm -hmm. the shape. So it worked out. So yeah, I would love to see it. So Some I'm gonna, your... oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm going to um, put everybody on gallery view. Okay. And I can hold up both of my pictures. Yes. And if you guys...